Hello everybody, Jonathan Boldy here with West Coast Weather. Today is September 24th, and this video is going to be dedicated to the cyclone that's off the Pacific Northwest Coast. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel if you like this content, that would be amazing. It helps support the channel and help get the word out to people that may need it. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Right now we're looking at the satellite imagery of the bomb cyclone that's off the coast of the Pacific Northwest. It looks amazing right now, and the pressure's down in the low to mid 950 millibar range, which is very low for any time of the year, especially September. So this video is just going to be going over the storm and its impacts on the West Coast. Already rain and breezy winds already affecting the Oregon and Washington coasts, and stronger winds will start affecting those areas later tonight and into tomorrow. This storm will have impacts on the coast all the way through Tuesday and even Wednesday as more blustery conditions and rain impacts the region. So let's go and check the models out for this storm. This is the European model for later tonight. This shows the storm getting down the 959 millibars. That is very low for this time of the year. And really any time of the year for, for that fact. And so if we go over the some wind gusts that we may see with this storm, you can see that out near the center, there's some 80 to 90 mile per hour gusts possible on the back end of this low pressure system. And with the front, there's going to be some 60 to maybe 65 mile per hour wind gusts off the coast generating very large waves. We'll look at that in a second. There's going to be some gusty winds for some of the higher terrain of Washington, Oregon, some of the coastal range. And places up near the Strait of Juan de Fuca and Whidbey Island and the, the San Juan Islands, there's going to be some gusty winds up there as well. So now let's, let's go and look at the significant wave height. So there's some waves up over 20 feet up near the center of the storm. As we head into later tonight into tomorrow, there's the, the, the waves will start spreading over towards the coast. Look at that 30 foot waves near the center of the storm that, that no boat would want to be out there. As we head into Monday afternoon and Monday evening, that's when the largest waves are likely to affect Vancouver Island and the Washington, Oregon coast with waves over 18 feet possibly. So if you're wave watching out there, make sure to not it, stay, keep your eyes on the water because you don't want to have a wave surprising you that could be over 15 feet tall. That would not be great. So as we go in the Tuesday, the waves are still going to be very large and the swell is going to be very large. So just be careful if you're out there watching those giant waves. And so now let's go look, look over at the National Weather Service map. You can see that there's some red flag warnings up for eastern Oregon. Even though the systems going in the Oregon and Washington, the eastern portions are going to stay relatively dry. So some of those gusty winds are going to create fire conditions. There's actually some flood watches over for the southwest Oregon and parts of um, the mountains in northern California. That's for some of the heavy rain that's going to hit the coastal ranges. And there's some storm warnings for the strong coastal winds with waves well over 12 feet and gale warnings that go out into the outer waters. So if we take a closer look at the at Medford, Oregon, where the flood watches are, there's some rain tolls of two to three inches, maybe even locally higher for some of those coastal areas. That's why those flood watches are up out there. But then you can see the drop off in rain amounts as you head east into eastern Washington, hardly anything past Lakeview. And then there's also going to be some strong wind gusts out there. That's what's going to cause the fire danger over in eastern Oregon. There's going to be some gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour possible for Port Orchard and Gold Beach down there. Generally, pretty light winds for the valleys, but still may, maybe we'll get a bit gusty out there. So now, now let's go and take a look at r possible rain totals. And you can see that the, this evening the rain's already starting to spread over Oregon and southwest Washington. As we head into later tonight, rain totals are already approaching one, one to one and a half inches of rain over the Olympics and some of the coastal areas. And as we head into Tuesday, this is when the heaviest rain is going to fall between now and Tuesday evening. Some totals may be approaching four to five inches on the Olympic Mountains, a couple, one to two inches in the Cascades, one, one inch to one and a half inches for some of the lowlands. Places up near the San Juans and northern Whidbey Island, though, are going to get 
significantly rain shall do to the winds that are going to be down sloping from the Olympics that causes the air to dry out on the other side. So that causes less precipitation over in those regions. So some some places may get less than a half an inch, even though this is a, this is a significant atmospheric river. And then some of the coastal areas of Oregon may get some two to three inches of rain down there or where the flood watches are. This mall is showing four to six inches. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but that is why those flood watches are out there. And then as we head into later on Wednesday and Thursday, you can see that there's even more rain that's going to start impacting the region as another system moves through. Maybe total precipitation for the entire week approaching five to six inches for some of the Olympics. Maybe getting over two inches for some of the Puget Sound and maybe the Willamette Valley. So it looks like we may dry out after Friday, but that's still quite a ways out. So we'll keep a watch on that. And if we take a closer look at the NAM. So if we look at the sounding, this is just kind of what the atmosphere is like. There's some spin in the atmosphere that's going to allow for maybe some funnel clouds and an isolated tornado on the Washington coast, which it's uncommon around here, but it's not impossible and it has happened before. So just to keep an eye out there, if you're, you happen to be on the coast wave watching. And as we look at the storm prediction center, the day two convective outlook for Monday tomorrow shows the possibility for some thunderstorms on the Washington and Oregon coasts. And even some of the interior locations will have the possibility. And if we go into the Day three outlook for Tuesday that kind of extends more northward in the parts of Idaho and northern Washington, but western Washington still has a possibility of some thunderstorms. And again, that possibility of maybe some funnel clouds and a water spout. So just keep an eye out because there's going to be a lot of active weather with this storm. Well, that's it for this video. I hope everybody enjoyed watching this video. And stay safe if you're out there wave watching or just in a place that's expected to get some strong winds or possibly some flooding, but um, we'll keep an eye out on the storm and I may, I may have another update out later this week, but school's going to keep me busy. So I'll try to find time to upload the next video, but anyways, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you in the next video.